10 print character string 205.5 plus random one semicolon colon go to 10. Typing this in is just an absolute rite of passage for Commodore users. And if you're not familiar, typing this into basic will basically, and running it obviously, will print out this cool maze-like pattern on the screen. And yeah, it's become pretty iconic with Commodore machines, and there's even been a book written about it, so that's saying something. But why basic, and why is this mostly seen on Commodore machines and not other computers and not other programming languages? And in today's video, I just want to sort of talk about it and show it off in a few different programming languages on different systems. So let's get right into it. First thing I want to talk about is why is this commonly seen on Commodore machines? The first thing is that the font that it uses, uh, it just works best for this because it connects on both corners, it just has the best effect. The second reason is that character code for a backslash is right next to the character code for a slash, so character 205 is a backslash, character 206 is a slash meaning it's just really easy to make like a little one-line program that picks between those two numbers. So next we're going to look at creating this program in GW Basic. This was the version of Basic that came with um, like various different IBM systems and IBM compatibles throughout the 1980s the early 90s and it's not quite as simple as a one-line program in here because the character code for a slash the character code for a backslash are not right next to each other so here's what I came up with so for line 10 we'll go x equals integer random 0 to 1 uh, it's one above the highest integer we can go so that's why there's two there for how the random number generator works and then we're, for line 20 we're gonna go f if x equals 0 then print slash and then go to 10, and 30, print backslash, go to 10. So if it's not zero, it'll keep going and then it'll print, so it must be one. So we'll go to 30, print a backslash. And we run it here. As you can see, it's not quite the same effect. Uh, I tried this out with both the VGA and like the CGA and Tandy font, and I find the CGA and Tandy font, which is what I'm using here, seems to work better even though it's lower resolution but yeah it still looks pretty cool so we're back to Commodore machines again but we're not going to be using basic this time we're going to be using another programming language that's most commonly used to program these old 8-bit systems that being assembly language we're going to start at memory address 1000 hex and we're going to be using the SID chip as a random number generator here and we need to set some parameters. First we're going to load the accumulator with 255 and we're going to store it in D40E and D40F. This sets the uh, this sets the rate in which random numbers are generated and by setting it to 255 we're basically going to tell it to pump out random numbers as fast as possible. Next, these next two lines just turn it on basically. Once it's on, we can retrieve these random numbers at memory location D4-1B. And once we load those into the accumulator, we're going to compare it to 205. It switched to CD there in hex. And we're going to branch if equal to 1018. Uh, there's nothing there at the moment, but through the magic of planning things out, there will be. Then we're going to compare it, because it still could be 206. So then we're going to compare it to 206. And then we're going to branch, if not equal, back to 100D, which is the start of this loop. We don't need to loop the first few lines. And now we're on to 1018. Remember that from earlier? Well, on this line, we're going to go jump to subroutine FFD2, which is a kernel routine that prints a character onto the screen. And then we're going to go JMP100D, which will jump to the beginning of the loop. 
we don't need to loop the first few lines, we only need to loop this section, and these first few lines are just initialization. Now we can exit the monitor and run it by typing SYS4096, which is just decimal for 1000 hex, which is our starting address. As you can see, it's running here. It's a bit faster than basic, definitely a bit more efficient, but it's not as fast as you might think because the random number generator is generating random numbers between 0 and 255, and it'll actually only print a character if that number is either 205 or 206. So it's actually kind of inefficient in that way, and a majority of the numbers that the random number generator is generating are not 205 or 206. I could also probably speed it up by using my own screen drawing routines and not using the built-in kernel routine, but whatever. If you were to make it any faster, it would sort of ruin the effect. I should mention that. Okay, so now to something a little bit more modern and a little bit more high off the processor. As you'd expect, Python made this very simple and straightforward. So let me show you what I came up with. So we're going to be using the Python random library. And then I created a while true loop, and that's basically just an infinite loop that will go on forever. And then I created a string variable and with a slash and a backslash. And if you're wondering why there's two backslashes, let me show you. If you try to just print a backslash in Python, you'll get an error because it's expecting something like backslash n or whatnot. So if you want to print just a single backslash, you have to do backslash backslash, or two backslashes, which will print out a single backslash. So that's why that is. And then we're going to use a function from the random library called random choice. So it's random dot choice, and then we're going to specify our string variable. And what this will do is it'll pick a character from that string variable just randomly, and it'll print it out to the screen. And then this little end thing at the end is just a uh, basically it keeps it from printing a new line afterwards. When we run it here, as you can see, it's extremely fast. And honestly, the effect just isn't there. It's just, yes it is, just random slashes and backslashes creating a somewhat of a maze-like pattern. You can't really see the maze-like pattern, mainly due to the font and because it's running too fast. But anyway, that's the way it is. So there's one final little thing I want to show you, and that is that I've actually figured out how to somewhat recreate this in Minecraft. And some of you are going to say, hey, Minecraft's not a programming language. Well, with a bit of creativity, anything can be a programming language. So here I am in Minecraft, and there's a mountain, and a chicken, and uh, if I turn on my heads-up display here, you can see there is a maze-like pattern made up of slashes and backslashes scrolling up the screen. Look familiar? Well, this is all being created by this machine over here. Let's head over to it. So the way this works is I've got a bunch of slimes and they're all jumping on pressure plates. And they just kind of hop around aimlessly. When they hop on a pressure plate, it outputs a signal into one of these guys. This is a command block. And command blocks are super cool. You can't obtain them legitimately. They're mainly just used for debugging and for various different custom maps and stuff. And what a command block is, is when it receives a signal, a redstone signal from like a button or a pressure plate, it'll enter this command into the command console. And the command I have it set to is just to say a uh, random string of uh, slashes and backslashes. These were actually generated by my Python script. And oh my goodness, seriously, there's a wandering trader here. Gotta take care of that. Those things are so annoying, they always get in the way when you're recording or trying to do stuff. But anyway, getting off topic here. So I've got several of these command blocks here, all set with the same say command, but different patterns created by my Python script. So it's not quite a true random maze since each line is preset, but the lines are being displayed in a random order. And I have these uh, redstone lamps here, just to sort of illustrate power and how it works. So anyway, yeah, it's pretty cool. So it's not quite a true random maze. It's vertically random, but horizontally is not. But it's still really cool regardless, and it's kind of hard to tell that 
horizontally, not random. But anyway, that's that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's just a random little video. First video of 2022 as well. Uh, I have lots of uh, really good videos coming up soon. Uh, just to give you some examples. I'm probably going to be ordering an Apple One replica kit type thing. So that'll be super cool. I can't wait to get that and put it together and make some videos about it. And I'm also going to be making fun of Chromebooks a bit more. So yeah, expect to see that in the next few months. But anyway... Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.